Hi, it's John here from The Scale Factory. I'm going to be looking today at Party Rock, which is a playground for Amazon Bedrock. Uh, Amazon Bedrock is a, a service provided by AWS for running uh, generative AI foundation models. And Party Rock is a, uh, a new thing that they've released in the last couple of days to let people play with the functionality of, of Bedrock's LLMs for free. Uh, and it's kind of fun. Uh, so let's take a look and see what we can achieve with it. The, uh, the tagline here is anyone can build AI apps. And I think uh, to the extent that uh, Party Rock makes that possible, that is true. Um, it's pretty easy to use. Um, there are some examples that they provided out of the box. Um, Weird tour guide is quite fun. Um, and uh, the, the premise of, of Party Rock is that you describe how you'd like your app to behave in English into a text box and it will go and create a, an application that you can use to uh, to do the things that you've just described. So in the case of the weird tour guide, you can uh, generate an app that tells the user five weird facts about any location they enter with a chat box acting as a local guide. Um, and uh, we can try it out down here. Um, I've already created an account, so I'd sign in. If you wanted to do this yourself, uh, at the point of clicking on this, you would get a, um, uh, a dialogue uh, where you can sign up with your, uh, your Google account account or Amazon account or an Apple account and uh, it's, it seems to be backed by Cognito so if you're familiar with Cognito you might have opinions about that but uh, it seems to work in this particular case um, so uh, I'm quite near to York in the United Kingdom so we'll do uh, tell it uh, York United Kingdom and hit uh, go and it's going to generate some facts about York um, let's see whether they're things that I already know um, 200 word numbered list of five true facts about York uh, with one weird, one unique, one random, one unexpected and one unbelievable fact. Uh, York has more bars per square mile than any other city in the UK with around 350 drinking establishments. York has more pubs, bars and nightclubs concentrated in its city centre than anywhere else in Britain. Um, I'm assuming that's true. Uh, these LLMs have obviously been trained on a, on a large corpus of, of data from uh, public sources, probably including Wikipedia and so forth. So um, I, I have no reason to doubt this in particular, but also it's not very it's not a very important thing for me to be finding out using LLM. If you were doing more important things, you'd probably want Want to fact check that sort of thing make sure that it's giving you real answers um home to the national railway museum the largest railway museum in the world yes that's true um my dad and my uncle took me there when i was very small because they were both train spotters uh, i've been to the uh, the national railway museum a couple of times although not recently so i probably need to rectify that um so uh you can see it's pretty straightforward um this is one of the canned uh canned applications but maybe we can have a go at uh, creating an application ourselves uh, backstage here, you can see there are no apps created, but let's uh, let's start by creating one. What would you like your app to do? Well, so um, the the doomsayers about uh, AI are saying that um, AI is going to come and take our jobs, and uh, frankly, I could do with a little bit more time sat in my garden. Maybe not in this weather, but uh, more, more generally throughout the year. So um, let's see if we can get this AI to take my job. Um, so. Describe what you would like your app to do. One of the things that uh, that we do at the Scale Factory, or the main thing we do at the Scale Factory, is supporting customers who are building SaaS platforms on AWS. And so, um, when we see new launches from AWS, um, one of the things that we th take a look at and think about is how is this launch, or this new product, or this new feature relevant for our SaaS customers? So let's try and and see if we can convince uh, Party Rock to build us an app that will do that for us. So, what would you like your app to? do um, so I would like the app to given a um, uh, the text of a blog post from the AWS what's new blog uh, please explain uh, for a CEO or CTO reader how that uh, would be useful to them in building their building their SaaS business. Okay, generate app, uh, and that is all the programming we need to do. Apparently, um, we're going to uh, sit and, and wait for a second while uh, Bedrock turns away in the background, uh, creating this app. Now, uh, Bedrock 
uh, in both in party rock sense and also um, using the playground in the AWS console has seemed a little slow to me. Um, that was quite a quite a sort of um, a, quite a wait for for a response. Um, it may well be, and, and I would assume that it would be uh, quicker if we were using some kind of uh, dedicated. Uh, performance characteristic which is one of the things you can do with bedrock you can create, create a new model uh, and say um, how much uh, how many queries you're going to be making and it will provision some uh, capacity for that um, but uh, I, I can assume that given that this is a free service it's probably quite quite sort of uh, well used at the moment and they may not have, have provisioned an awful lot of capacity for it so um, although it seems slow here I don't think there's any reason to expect that uh, bedrock itself in production would be slow but um, I guess you'd try that out if you were running your own applications um, okay so we've got now a couple of boxes um, one uh, box here explaining what the application does and one here asking to uh, paste the, the blog post. Oh yes, okay, so this, the, the box at the top is the output and the box at the bottom is the is the blog post I'm gonna give it, which is, seems like the wrong way around to me, but uh, let's uh, give it some text. So one of the things that was uh, announced yesterday is that SQS uh, has announced support for logging data events using AWS CloudTrail, um, which uh, all, all good kind of compliance and security stuff. So let's paste that in and uh, you can see now that the box at the top is, is starting to work. Um, it's a quite, a, can I make that any bigger? Nope, good. Um, so here is a detailed paragraph explaining how logging SQS APIs using CloudTrail could be useful for CEO or CTO at a SaaS company. Uh, Locking SQS API activity using AWS CloudTrail provides key visibility and auditing capabilities that are crucial for SaaS companies. Yep, true. Uh, as a CEO or CTO, ensuring your message queues are being used securely and operating as intended is important for protecting customer data and maintaining a quality customer experience. CloudTrail's ability to capture all SQS API calls, including who made the request when it was made and the request parameters, allows business and technology leaders to gain valuable insights. It helps address compliance. So I'm already bored, right? I'm a busy CEO. Um, that's a lot Lot of text to read. Um, if I wanted to read a lot of text, I probably would have just looked at the original blog post, which is about as long as what is in theory a summary here. So let's see if we can tune that. Um, we can go to edit here and um, you can see the prompt that has been created from my original description of how I wanted the app to behave. Um, and um, I, I don't think I asked it to generate a detailed paragraph. Um, and in fact, I would much rather have a uh, a, a briefer summary um, so maybe we say something like explain how the content from the blog post blog post could be useful for a CEO or SaaS, CEO or SaaS company looking to build their business uh, mm, restrict your response to two sentences <laughs> there we go I'm busy let's try and do something a bit quicker uh, we've switched the order of the, the fields around now, that's probably better. Um, and so if I hit retry on that, there we go. So a much much shorter explanation, uh, suitable for me as a busy CEO. Uh, this update could help the CEO or CTO gain visibility and oversight of their AWS account usage relating to Amazon SQS. We allow them to audit interactions with SQS queues for security and troubleshooting purposes, helping ensure proper controls and smooth operations, right? So yes, that, that is broadly true. Um, one other thing that you might have noticed when we were looking at the uh, tuning parameters is that there's a bunch of other things that we could have, have uh, changed here. So one of the things is the model. And um, I'm assuming that what Party Rock's done here is cho chosen Claude um, to be the model of choice um, because there's a we're, we're pasting blog posts and blog posts are quite a lot of text um, and so Claude has quite a big context window um, which uh, which means that it's um, it can summarize larger pieces of text a context window is um, it's measured in tokens and uh, a token is broadly equivalent to a word but but not entirely that there's um, there's a bit of uh, nuance to that uh, uh, models that have higher context windows they can summarize longer text uh, entries and they can remember more of your interaction with them and the more more of the conversation if you like um, so uh, Claude's a good choice for this Claude instant presumably because it's quicker um, in this case and, and I guess cheaper to run um, but we could choose um, uh, one of the Jurassic um, Jurassic 2 models. Let's try Jurassic 2 Ultra because Ultra is obviously better than mid. Um, I'm assuming that these uh, these dots here mean how many credits it's using. Um, there are 
Um, although uh, Party Rock is free to use, it, there was mention in the sign up page about limited number of free credits and so forth. I haven't hit that yet, but maybe we will as we go. We'll see. Um, so if I save that now uh, to see whether we uh, see what we do with uh, with Jurassic, um, so I get a different explanation now. Uh, blog post explains that SQS now supports logging data event SQS APIs using AWS CloudTrail, providing great visibility to SQS activities. So help CEO at a SaaS company more easily enable auditing, governance, and compliance to their AWS account when building their business using microservices, distributed systems, and service applications. But yep, yeah, I mean, that's a, arguably a better um, better explanation than the, the one that we got out of Claude earlier. And um, there are also some advanced settings. And because I'm a nerd, whenever I see something um, that I can uh, fiddle with in advanced settings, I'm always going to have a look. And there are two things here um, called temperature and top P. Um, and this, I think, um, deserves a little bit of extra extra explanation. Uh, so we'll just jump over to uh, a slide or two where, where we talk through that. Um, temperature is a is a way of setting the randomness of the model. So a a, a higher temperature means that the um, that the model is going to behave more randomly and less deterministically. Um, and what that means in in sort of practical terms is that if you create a if you give it a higher temperature number, um, the model will be more creative. It's going to spit out uh, more novel output um, by increasing the chances of picking less probable words from the pool. So as, as we are, um, as we're, we're using these models, essentially what's happening is um, the, uh, the you're, you're providing a prompt and it's spitting out words and um, as the as the words are coming out, it's looking at the model and seeing what is the most probable word or probable, most probable token, I should say, um, that follows this sequence of tokens based on the data that it has in its corpus. So um, you could imagine that uh, if you were to type the cat sat on the, um, the next most probable token is probably Matt, um, but there are there's, there are also probably sentences in the corpus of, of data that, that it's ingested uh, where cats are sitting on trees or uh, laps or, or whatever. And so those other words or those other tokens would also be probable, um, but maybe less probable than Matt. And so, by tuning the, um, the the temperature parameter, you make it more likely that it will choose one of those l less probable tokens in in the output. Hopefully, that's sort of relatively clear. Um, the top P parameter is a it's a probability threshold, uh, which means that when you when you set the top P parameter, the model will only select tokens whose sum of probability exceeds that threshold. Now, that doesn't make a lot of sense in uh, as spoken, um, but let's take a look at, at this diagram here. Um, so um, you can see here the the seed sentence here is my date last night gave me, uh, and so if we look at the um, the the probability of the tokens that will follow the the tokens in that sentence uh, we might have flowers we might have chocolates we might have champagne we might have jewelry we might have a rash hopefully no one's dating people who are giving them rashes uh, but it's uh, it is a possibility although probably a lower possibility or probability than uh, than those other tokens and so if we set a top p of uh, 0.5 um, we start start going through the the tokens by order of descending order of probability, and uh, and we stop at the point at which the sum of the probability of the tokens that we found um, exceed that top p threshold. So in, in, with a top p of 0.5, um, flowers and chocolates are the only two tokens that we're going to consider um, from the pool, um, and then the temperature will determine how randomly we select from those those two tokens. Uh, so a, a temperature of zero, which is uh, no randomness at all or we'll always choose flowers in that case because that is the uh, the, the most probable outcome from that, that model. Um, if we change the top P to uh, 0 0.75, uh, then we don't hit that um, that threshold until we've considered all five of these tokens. And so um, the temperature now will determine the randomness of how we select from all of these five tokens with a high temperature and a, uh, and a top P of, uh, of 0 0.75 we might well spit out the answer a rash in uh, response to my date last night gave me. Um, so we can fiddle with these in the um in the in the model, um, so let's uh, let's have a look and, and see what happens when we do that. So um, if I want to uh, if I want to make this model um, more creative, or I want to make make this prompt give us some more creative results, if I push the temperature all the way up to one, and I push the top P all the way up to one, then in theory, what's happening is uh, we're going to get um, a, a more tokens to consider because top P is now larger. Um, 
and we are generating uh, more entropy around how we're choosing from those tokens so we might get a more weird output um so i guess let's see what happens when we hit save here and i guess retry now that we've got new uh new parameters um so let's see what we've got um blog post announces that Amazon Simple Q service now integrates with AWS CloudTrail, a service that logs all API activities in an AWS account. This allows customers to track all activity in their SQS queues, such as the actions performed, who performed them, and when. This information can be used for security, auditing, and compliance purposes, as well as to troubleshoot issues and optimize operations. So, again, all true. Um, a, a reasonable, um, a reasonable explanation of, of uh, what's going on in that blog. Obviously, it's it's taken a bunch of what it knows about SQS and CloudTrail from other data that it has in its in, in its model, um, and so it hasn't got all of this from um, from the from the blog post itself. It's surmising uh, it from uh, from other other text it's seen. That's all fine, and I think um, uh, you probably would not expect a model like this, given these um, given these input prompts. To spit out anything really strange, um, because the text that's been trained on is not going to be, uh, you know, Dada-esque, um, crazy, crazy stuff. Um, but if you were using this model to to be more creative, um, such as writing poetry or or prose or, or something like that, then tuning those um, those parameters upwards might get you a more interesting result. Um, and certainly, they're they're worth playing with on on that score. Um, so. Uh, I don't know if uh, if this AI is going to put me entirely out of a job, but um, this is certainly a, a reasonable uh, reasonable use case, right? Summarizing text in in context um, and uh, uh, positioning that summary for a particular audience. That's some of what we do in the consultancy world. Um, whether or not this is useful to anyone, I don't know. I I can uh, in theory publish this. Um, so I can say, well, let's before we publish it, let's just tune down those parameters because um, <laughs> we can't be completely certain that it's not going to do anything really weird. Um, but I, I do feel like we, we want it to be um, a bit more interesting um, than, uh, than just spitting out the same thing every time so that if you give it the same uh, input, you might get some different outputs depending on how often you try it. Um, hit, uh, hit play there again and make sure that it's nothing nothing uh nothing crazy yep all fine okay so let's see what happens uh if we make public and share anyone with this link can now see use and remix your app okay cool uh copy that to the clipboard i'm gonna save that over here somewhere um so that i can share that on uh and close that down i might uh, might give that a different can i give that a different name Yes. Let's do that. Release those changes. Cool. Okay. So um, that's about the extent of what you can do with with Party Rock. It's a it's a fun thing to play with, and I think. Um, uh, if like me, you haven't been kind of living in the generative AI stuff for for a, for a long while, um, this is uh, it's a good introduction. It's a it's a good thing to play with. Um, it's a, a good on ramp, I think, to understanding what you could achieve with uh, generative AI in your AWS environment. I think the next steps for me on this is if if I were going to uh, to develop it further, would be to um, I guess take the prompts and the and the settings that I've played with here in um, in the. Uh, in the party rock playground and see if i can set it up actually in bedrock itself and uh, maybe use that uh to uh, to ingest blog posts themselves from the aws what's new rss feed um put them through the uh through the the, the model and then uh publish that um that feed somewhere else possibly also as an rss feed whether i'll have the time to do that i don't know it's uh, it's reinvent in uh, in a week or so so i'm gonna be quite busy um but uh, but that would be the next step uh so party rock is is available for you to uh, to try out uh, it's at partyrock.aws and uh, i'd love to hear what you've built with it uh, if you do something fun thanks for watching